The pollution crisis in China and its damaging effects that go beyond borders are nothing new to Korea. Citizens here for decades have been coughing up China's yellow dust and suffer the heavy smog and acid rain. But with the level of pollutants on the rise, Beijing is finally starting to take bolder steps to curb green gas emissions. Arirang News' Song Ji Sun joins us now in the studio. So, Ji Sun, any progress on, on China's attempts? Well, you know, China, the world's second largest economy and obviously Asia's largest economy, consumes the most coal and emits the most carbon dioxide in the world. And its Asian neighbors, including Korea, have always felt the impact. In fact, more than 40 percent of the pollutants in the air in the capital Seoul here are believed to have blown from the neighboring China. And it may be a slow start, but the communist nation has begun renewing efforts to fix its air quality nightmare by launching measures to tackle its air pollution problem. Take a look. It seems like Beijing no longer wants to be tacked as a smoky gray capital of the world's second largest economy. At the UN Climate Change Conference in Warsaw, which ended over the weekend, the country pledged to balance its economic growth with stronger efforts to control pollution. At our pavilion, we are showing that the Chinese government, along with Chinese citizens, is making every effort to address air pollution. We have also launched the world's first national low-carbon day to encourage the public to help achieve the goal of a low-carbon China. That won't be easy. China relies on coal for about 80 percent of its energy generation, mostly due to the rising number of automobiles and factories and consumes nearly half of the world's coal supply. As a result, China has the highest carbon dioxide emissions in the world. Going green is no longer an option. It's a must for the Asian country. One section of the country's five-year plan ending in 2015 is dedicated to environment and pollution control. Beijing requires that cars take a day off the road every other day, and it has closed factories that do not abide by emission standards. China's current green growth policy is different from that of developed countries. While those countries' goal of green growth is aimed at the public's well-being, China is in a position in which it must rehabilitate the environment, which has become heavily polluted over its three decades of rapid economic growth. China and other countries with high greenhouse gas emissions want some time to make plans at the recent UN climate change conference in Poland. Member countries will have until 2015 so to publish plans for cutting greenhouse gases starting in 2020. So we still have a long wait. But in the meantime, all this pollution can be an opportunity for Korean firms? That's right. Although it's only at a beginning stage, Korea is hoping to take a leading role in boosting the green energy industry while tackling the pollution problem in China. And Korean companies are seeing new business opportunities in Beijing's dusty air. China's renewable energy generation accounts for 20 percent of the total, an $800 billion market in 2020. We've been focusing on developing the necessary technologies, and now it's time to target new demand. We believe our advanced technologies are competitive enough to generate new revenue in the market. The Korean government launched a task force in 2011 to support companies seeking to export their green energy technologies to China. So are they making a dent into the pollution? Well, not just it. I've been contacting the small and mid-sized businesses that are developing eco-friendly fuels and renewable forms of energy, but many of them have responded that they have struggled to enter the Chinese market where the regulations and entry barriers for Korean companies are very high. So they still have a long way to go in China, which could eventually be the tallest of the biggest demand for alternate fuel and renewable energy. So back to the cross-border pollution issue, are there any practical ways of lessening the devastating effects of China's pollution? Well, not just yet. Well, actually, China is actually responsible for the dust blowing into neighboring countries in Northeast Asia. And Seoul and Tokyo have actually called on Beijing to provide a detailed report on China's air pollution levels, but Beijing never has. The environment ministry of the three countries agreed earlier this year to hold talks on air pollution control and ways to address the issue. And it's an expensive problem. According to LG Economic Research Institute, the air pollution from China that coming into Korea can cost Korea as much as one trillion won, which is about a billion dollars a year. All right. Well, too bad there's no way for one big fat lawsuit to settle the whole deal. Thanks right. so much, Ji-sun, for Thank you. the report.